Greetings from CVIR India. Today we will deal with an interventional radiological procedure in relation to the management of gastric variceal bleeds. This refers to your BRTO, Parto, Carto and Bato procedures. This involves the occlusion of spotosystemic shunts in addition to the gastric varices that cause the bleed. In general, this is done in patients who have a gastrorenal shunt in situ. A brief review of the anatomy of the gastric varices. In general, the gastric varices have inflow from the inferior gastric vein, the posterior gastric vein and the short gastric vein, all of which are branches that are related mainly with the splenic vein. The gastric varices will have outflow most commonly through the gastrorenal shunt into the left renal vein and further into the IVC. They can also drain directly into the IVC that forms the gastrocaval shunt. The distal branches of the inferior phrenic vein can anastomose with the pericardiophrenic veins as well as smaller veins which are retroperitoneal or lumbar veins can also lead on to a systemic outflow. Why you need to manage this is unlike your esophageal variceal bleeds, in general gastric variceal bleeds are associated with high morbidity and mortality which in some of the studies have been accounted to be more than even 50 percentage. In general they are difficult to tackle via endoscopy not only because of access issues but because of the high flow shunt that is there in these patients which prevents your sclerosant or your glue to an extent to be confined within only the gastric varices. Generally earlier the treatment modality or the interventional management was largely limited to TIPS which generally results in a global reduction of portal venous pressure. Now this will suffice for esophageal variceal bleeds. However, gastric variceal bleeds generally occur at a relatively lower pressure and hence the rationale of doing TIPS for gastric variceal bleeds was not established. What we do is in general via a femoral route or via IGV route, we will cannulate the left renal vein and then occlude the gastrorenal shunt using a balloon in which case it becomes a BRTO. If we use a plug it becomes parto. If we are using coils to occlude the varices and the shunt it becomes carto. All these procedures we are doing through the systemic route. Now in patients who already have a TIPS shunt or in patients who don't have this gastrorenal shunt, we can percutaneously cannulate the portal vein or through the TIPS shunt reach the splenic vein and the inflow veins into the gastric varices and sclerose them. In this case, it is called as a BATO. We'll see few cases of BRTO that were done in our center. This was of a 52 year old female who had cirrhosis portal hypertension, child B, who had multiple episodes of upper GI bleed with respect to mainly hematemesis and melina. The esophageal varices were managed with glue injection multiple times. However, the gastroesophageal varices which were of GOV2 type in the last endoscopy could not be managed endoscopically and the patient continued to have melina after two days of the last endoscopy. Patient's hemoglobin dropped from 9 to 7.5 and patient did not have any evidence of hepatic encephalopathy or ascites. A CT portovenogram was done in view of the GOV type 2 varices which showed enlarged gastric varices with some of the variceal veins protruding into the gastric lumen with a prominent gastrorenal shunt draining into a retroaortic left renal vein in this site. So this was the gastric varices with the gastrorenal shunt draining into the left renal vein. This patient was taken up for BRTO wherein we used a right femoral axis and cannulated the gastrorenal shunt. We occlude the shunt using a balloon. Now many a times when we occlude the shunt with balloons and take an injection, there are chances of inadvertent rupture of smaller retroperitoneal veins as in this case. However, most of these bleeds are self-limiting and you need not specifically do anything for managing the same. We repositioned the sheath and then took an angiogram that showed filling of the gastric varices and a small efflux through the inferior phrenic vein. 
Now, if you don't occlude this inferior phrenic vein as an outflow, your sclerosin mixture may slowly flux out of the gastric varices, limiting your BRTO uh, procedure. And hence, we selectively cannulated the inferior phrenic vein, placed a coil to embolize the same, and through a microcatheter, after keeping the balloon inflated, we have injected sclerosin mixture into the gastric varices. This patient particularly, we kept the balloon inflated for around 8 hours. Anywhere from 8 to 24 hours, you have to keep the balloon in situ. And that is the problem with BRTO, wherein you need to keep the patient in your IR suit or intermittently fluoro the patient to make sure that the balloon is remaining to be inflated and not ruptured. And hence, there is always a delay of around 8 to 24 hours for you to remove all your hardware from the patient. This was a 40-year-old male who had alcohol-related cirrhosis who was again child B with multiple episodes of upper GI bleed. At the time of admission, he had a hemoglobin of 7.1 with OGD showing gastroesophageal viruses type 2. He also did not have any ascites or hepatic encephalopathy. CT portovenogram was done which showed prominent gastric viruses in the gastric fundus and the prominent gastrorenal shunt draining into the left renal vein here. This patient was taken up for uh, gastric varicell embolization. Again, through the femoral route, we cannulated the left renal vein further into the gastrorenal shunt. We, instead of using a balloon for occlusion, this time we have used a vascular plug to occlude the gastrorenal shunt. And then through the parallel microcatheter, we have injected sclerosant along with contrast mixture into the gastric varices with the final deployment of the plug in situ, which will cause a permanent occlusion of the gastrorenal shunt. This procedure took only about two, two and a half hours, thereby ensuring that the patient can be shifted out of your cath lab at a very short time. This was another case of 58 year old male with cirrhosis alcohol related child B. This patient had chronic hepatic encephalopathy features in addition to earlier episodes of upper GI bleed. His serum ammonia levels were 230 and this was a CT portovenogram that showed, showed uh, gastroesophageal varices with the gastrorenal shunt draining into the left renal vein. In view of chronic hepatic encephalopathy, this patient was again planned for a gastric variceal embolization with cannulation as in the previous case with a angiogram taken within the gastric varices showing a flux through the inferior phrenic vein as well as few of the retroperitoneal veins. Now these were selectively cannulated with a microcatheter and embolized with gel foam prior to plug, de plug deployment and sclerosis of the gastric varices. Post procedure on the fourth day the patient had a serum ammonia of 57 and is presently on follow up with no further bleeding episodes and resolution hepatic encephalopathy. This was a case of a 58 year old male with cirrhosis uh, fatty liver related who had no episodes of melina but had significant hepatic encephalopathy. CT portovenogram showed multiple varices that were in relation to the splenic hilum. Patient did not have any episodes of upper GI bleed which was evident also from the CT which showed no varices in relation to the stomach. This varices were seen to drain into the IVC via two shunts, one at the L2 level and the other at L3 level. In view of hepatic encephalopathy, parto was planned in order to occlude the shunt. The same shunts at L2 and L3 were cannulated. This is at the L3 level, which was initially cannulated. And coil embolization of the varices was done initially followed by plug occlusion of the shunt into the IVC. This was followed by cannulation of the larger shunt at L2 level and plug occlusion at the shunt site into the IVC with a parallel microcatheter parked into the varices. This is the final picture after deployment of both the vascular plugs and the stasis of the contrast agent within the varices. So as far as interventional radiological management for gastric varices goes, if there are no other complications, and what I mean by other complications is mainly 
either transudative related that is either ascites or hydrothorax or any shunt related so your encephalopathy if neither of this is there your procedure of choice is basically a brto because you are occluding the shunt and increasing your portal venous flow so the liver function will also to an extent improve if you are doing a brto if patient has a shunt related complication you still prefer brto because it's generally a shunt occlusion procedure if patient has significant ascites or hydrothorax this is basically a transudative procedure uh, complication related to the increase in portal venous pressure so you, your aim in these set of cases is to reduce the portal venous pressure for which tips is the primary procedure of choice you might need to do a brt or a bato in addition to manage the varices separately if you are seeing non clinical ascites basically in your ct you are seeing minimal ascites or a hydrothorax you can still go ahead and do a brt and see whether the ascites increases so if your transudative complications increase on follow up later on you can perform a tips procedure in patients who have uncontrolled esophageal varices again the procedure of choice is primarily tips with or without a brt or bato now you have patients who have both transudative complications as well as shunt related complications which are in general patients who are having poor hepatic reserve and hence a poor prognosis but in these patients of brto and tips in general the procedure that you can give a try is brto obviously with suboptimal results and with the increase in transudative complications of ascites and hydrothorax thank you